Hi, I'm Ray Lim. For the whole month of March, I'll be doing mini deep dives on Duik Basso 2, so if that's something you're interested in, definitely stick around for my videos in the coming weeks. And this week, I'll cover Duik Bones. First, I'll explain how the tool works and how to use it. Then I'll show two common real-world applications for this tool. So the whole point of Duik is to replace the default After Effects puppet pins. In case you don't know how that works, I'll do a quick demo. So this is a basic shape for an animal tail. And I'll click the puppet pin which is up here and click the top, middle and edge. So by itself you can already animate this. But Duik opens up a bunch of additional options which has become critical in my usual workflow. So I'll undo that and I'll go to create the bones now in the Duik Basel panel under this is rigging and links and constraints, click bones. But before you click add bones, you have to make sure that uh, effects puppet that you're on the legacy the advance won't work so never again make sure you're on legacy and then create bones as you can see on the screen Duik has taken each puppet pin and spread it out on its own layer so all the puppet pins I just set have now its own layer down here let's adjust it real quick so let's maybe rename this to say top this one middle and this one is bottom. Now you do have the option to rename them uh, down here before you make bones, but I prefer to uh, to rename it once once the bones have come out because that way it's, it alleviates a lot of the confusion. So now I'm going to talk about some of the new functionality and uh, options that we have now that the bones are on their own layer. The first obvious one is parenting, so I can parent the bottom to the middle and the middle to the top. Now this is completely impossible if they were still in the uh, in the puppet pins here. So there's no option to parent it here. But once you spat them out on their own bone layer, now you can do that. So let me try moving the bottom. And moving that. Oops, sorry, that's scaling it. That's scaling it again. Wherever I move the middle pin, the bottom pin will follow as well, right? And the top, of course, will off them. So let's undo everything. And another function that we now have access to is rotation. So let's try rotating this by pressing R, rotating. Now this is completely impossible without Duik Bones. The normal puppet pin doesn't have that function. So let's try rotating the middle as well. It's nice. And the bottom. The bottom doesn't work because there's nothing else connected to it below. Okay. Now let's use our new functionality and options to try to animate this tail. Okay, so now we have a semi-decent tail wag. Another application is to create quick but low effort character animations. I know that sounds kind of mean, but sometimes when you have a tight deadline, it's, you can't always do your best work, so you have to work smart in these cases. I will be using this super simple character for demonstration, he's obviously Mike from Monsters Incorporated, and I'll talk a little bit about the layer setup, which is the, the main body here, the head. Uh, sorry, not the head, the arms, both arms and both legs are behind. The horns are obviously behind. Okay, now I'll walk you through the process on how to create some simple animations. First, we're going to start with the puppet pins and then the bones. We will go with this hand first because I want him to wave with this hand. So one for the, 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 the shoulder, one roughly in the middle for the elbow. Oops, that's a little bit too to the right. Uh, one in the middle and one here. So let's see how that works. Okay, not too bad. Let's go down and change it to legacy. And for the number of triangles, let's go for 400. Let's see how that works. I'll just click that. Yeah, see it's much smoother compared to just now. Okay, now let's go ahead and create the bones for it. There you go, all three come out. Now we're going to rename this uh, right shoulder, and this one right elbow, 
it's important to rename this because when you have like 10 or 12 of them you, know, you can get lost real fast so this will be right hand now i'll just use hmm, position and rotation for them okay and show both using the u key so this is start position i'll jump to two seconds and zoom in and animate the end okay Uh, I don't want him to start from this 90 degree T pose, it's looking kind of strange. Let's have him start from here. Okay, that, that looks much more natural. Now go to. Yeah, two seconds is way too long. Let's shrink this to one second. Then two seconds, I'll copy the original keyframes over. Ctrl C, Ctrl V. Yeah, and it should be going back now. Okay. Maybe you don't need rotation. Just get rid of them. And you. Um. Okay, and then let's easy ease all them with F9. Still really slow. How about we reach? We half the distance, the duration, sorry. Yeah, okay, that's much more lively. Now, for the other hand, there won't be any waving animation, but I want him to put his hand on the on his hip. So we're gonna do the same thing, which is we scroll down, uh, pop a pin, and create the bones for it. So again, for the hand, really roughly the middle, the elbow, and the shoulder. Now you can use rulers if you want to make it really exact, but because in the end everything gets kind of mushy, so. I don't feel the need to be like pixel perfect for this. Legacy, uh, 400 triangles. Okay, click mesh one and add bones. Okay, there we go. Now for some reason I can't see this one. Is it because it's... Oh, right, I can't see this, the, this one because it's below the body. You move the body away, there it is. But uh, it's okay because you, we won't be moving that one anyway. So we'll call this shoulder. This one elbow. And this one hand. So we only need to uh, keyframe the position for these two because this one's not going to move. Although we will later parent it to the body if we want to do a walk cycle. So hand, elbow and hand position. We didn't even need to keyframe it because we're not animating it, but it's okay. And move that down. Uh, if you stretch it too far, it will become sharp. We don't want that. So we'll try to keep it within reasonable bounds. Okay, yeah, I think that looks, that looks pretty decent for something that took so fast or so little time. Okay, now I'm going to take it a step further and animate some ambient movement for this character. So it won't be just the hands, but also some body and some feet movement. It might take a couple minutes, so I'll speed it up so you don't have to sit through it.
Okay, so now I've created some very basic uh, ambient character movement. It's not very high quality and it's definitely not something you, that you want to put front and center. But it's pretty good for a background character that nobody's really going to notice or focus on. And it's good because it only took, it only took a few minutes of my time. Very simple to produce. Now the alternate way to animate characters with Duric is the standard IK rig. The setup is different, it's more time consuming but it looks better. Here's an example of that from one of my previous projects. And I can see that the limbs are controlled not using the, the pop-up pins but rather these structures. As you can see I can manipulate them like this. And let's undo that. And what I need to do is to have the arm and the forearm on separate layers and I need to specify the anchor point so it will snap right to the center. So it generally works better if um, uh, the arm and forearm connect in a ball, like a ball in the center here. So I'll play, a, the, I'll play this animation so you can see how it looks like in action. Okay, then he gets pulls up and he drops down. So I think this I think this looks better. It's more time consuming and I won't be covering how to do that in this video. There are a lot of tutorials on how to do that out there, so just search around on YouTube and you'll find it. Okay, we've arrived at the end of this tutorial. Now for a quick recap, the point of Duit Bones is to get more functionality out of pop-up pins. It places all pop-up pins on their own layer. It enables parenting and rotation. And because it's on its own layer, it's easier to see and manipulate. If you found value from this video, you can show your appreciation by leaving a like. If you want to see similar content weekly, there's a button for that. I hope to see you next week.